Matt Jesus on a Pilgrimage, Still Walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Today, uh, I, want to, I want to talk with you all uh, of certainly about the passages and specifically probably playing a little bit more with the gospel, holding that, you know, uh, more to our attention. But what is, what is very clear to me uh, is uh, that uh, there is in these passages chosen for us today, right, as part of a, a collection of, of verses from Scripture, is, is if you will, uh, the importance of following Christ and what's supposed to happen if we follow Christ, right? So there's, there's this kind of this uh, uh, message of, we heard it in the colic, this shining forth that's supposed to happen. As we gaze upon the countenance of Christ, let us then shine forth, right? We have Moses who goes on the mountain top and he encounters God and he shines Fourth, right? It's so much they have to they have to veil him. Paul begins to play with that image a little bit. I really like the end of that passage where he talks about let us take on the Christ, let us shine forth with Christ, and then we get the transfiguration story, which I just read. And so I want to hold this perhaps as an allegory, if you will, of what we're actually doing here. <laughs> like what is the purpose of of good religion and going to church on Sunday. Uh, just to put it straight, just to give it to you, right? I'm just gonna tell you how it is. So <clears throat> the first thing is that uh, uh, I, I think um, as we have these images of going away to pray, right? So we got Moses and we have Jesus and Paul talking about going away and praying. And I really resonate with the disciples who were weighed down with sleep. I mean, Sunday morning, if, if we, you know, why couldn't Jesus have picked like Sunday afternoon to have church or something, right? But we don't, we have Sunday morning, so we all kind of, you know, I have to kind of get going to, to be ready. And so there's this whole thing, but it is important, and I'll tell you, I'll, I know why it's important for you all. And that's because after two years of a pandemic and political division, you're here on Sunday morning. So you all must value what you get here, right? You see some value in coming to be together. So we have the image of communal prayer, of coming together, singing hymns, uh, and and hopefully on Sunday morning from this pulpit, receiving some glimpse of the glory of God through the preaching of the scripture that maybe comes alive from time to time, as well as uh, I mean, we're just steeped in Scripture when we come to worship, aren't we? The prayers, the hymns, uh, uh, we probably read more Scripture in our worship than any other denomination. Uh, and then we have this preaching tradition, all of which ends up at the table, uh, and, then, and then we go. Now, well, so that's, that's the first thing I would say. It's like coming and being here, we see as important, but it's been important. Christians have felt like they had to come together since the very beginning. We see this, of course, uh, in the words that Peter, like, hey, this is great. Let's stay here and build these three houses, uh, and that's great. Now, a lot of time we make fun of him, except we all kind of did it, didn't we? I mean, like, here we are. <laughs> so uh, we have to recognize this is kind of a human thing that we needed, and we see it all the way back to Abraham when he left the Ur of Chaldeans to go out into the wilderness. And he, the first thing he does is set up a table out there, right, to worship God. So, so for those who worship God and follow God, religion coming together uh, on Sunday and at other times, you know, you have Bible say that these are important parts of holding our community uh, together. Now, uh, but, I, I guess I would say, but... Uh, that is not the purpose. <laughs> and we also see that in the scriptures we're given, right? So yes, Moses comes down and he comes down and he's shining forth, right? But he's bringing the commandments. Like, so the, the story isn't about Moses shining forth. He's, the purpose is that he's coming back 
to the people with a way of life he wants to unfold, that God's given him to unfold. So it's about living life. It's not about the shining of the face. The shining of the face is what tells us this is important. He's seen God, and now he's going to live out. We're going to be a community that lives a particular life. And in the same way, in the story of the transfiguration, right, we have an image of this glorious countenance, we say, of the transfiguration of Christ on the mountaintop. It's beautiful. It's shining, bright light. Ooh, it's all very special. But what happens next? Now, this is what's interesting. We, we don't have to read the second part of the lesson, but I did today. That's why I had to stand a little longer. But it had, it's important because immediately he goes down to heal people. So it's not just the transfiguration, my son, whom I've chosen and I'm well pleased with, and a revelation of the shining Christ that comes out into the world, and we recognize this Christ meant for the changing of the world and the healing of people, right? Like, that's what he's going to like. We're not saying here. We're going to go back to work. And in fact, we have that passage in the transfiguration. It's a little frustrated, like, okay, disciples, obviously you haven't gotten it yet. Uh, <laughs> You're supposed, you know, how long do I have to persevere? And we kind of joke about that a little bit, right? I mean, that, that it seems, it just seems funny. It's like, you know, he's not mad at the father. He's just like, oh, come on, guys. You know, I'm just up on the mountaintop. Didn't you understand what I was saying? And, you know, so there's, so the, what I would say to you, it's normal and there's no shame <laughs> in the fact that sometimes we stumble and aren't able to fulfill what God wants and desires of us. And yet, God says, how long? He asks the question in Christ. How long must I persevere? And of course, if we read all the Gospels, what we know is that at the end of the Gospel, he says, I will be with you to the end of the ages. How long? Forever. I'm going to persevere with your human mess forever. Okay, so we can breathe again. And then we can accept, I think, the purpose is this. We pray before the coming of the Holy Spirit. We pray to hear God speak. We pray and hope for revelation about how we're supposed to go out into the world. We, we pray in such a way, hopefully, that we are literally knocked to our knees in humility before the beauty and revelation of who God is in Christ. And we pray for the ministry and wisdom as we go out into the world, such that what we hear in, day, hear in, to, in this chapel today, in this church today, we take out with us. And that we are intended to go shining forth from this place, Filled with the Spirit, open, wandering. What's God doing? Where are the fathers and the mothers and the children who are sick? Where are the ways in which we can change the world around us? And you all have been doing that in discerning how you could help the community be better. So that's part of my reason for being here today, right? Is to bless a space that is literally about helping the people of Navasota and children. Now, I didn't pick this lesson. This is, this is serendipity. This is God's Holy Spirit moving that we happen to have these two things, <laughs> right? A, 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 a clear vision of what religion is supposed to be. We come together to pray in order that we may be filled with the Spirit, shine forth and go into the world. And here you are filled with the Spirit, curious about how you can do things, and changing the community through your actions. It's a great image of how these two things can come together. So what I would say is keep it up <laughs> and you're going to fail, right? Like sometimes you're not going to be able to cast out the demons. All right. God's going to be with you in your failures too. Bishop Greg visited a long time ago. We were, we were talking before the service about Bishop Greg coming here and, you know, Y'all have a great history, ups and downs through the years. God has never abandoned you. God is here, and you come faithfully. So keep it up. Yeah, let's celebrate today. Let's have a good day. 
together. Let us shine forth. Let us be grateful. Humble, but grateful and happy about what God's doing in this place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.